cutter bearing down to where it'll fit and we want to end up with two thousands thrust and in the manual in the engine book on page 19 they do tell you the difference between the early style which was a longer bearing and the later style which is what around 25 six seven somewhere in there uh, during 24 it says right there they went and changed the front bearing so uh, we know what the dimension is because it tells us right there in the book what that bearing should be uh, 1 inch 781 2 and who can who can read 2 I can't and if we want 2000s clearance which is what I shoot for uh, it means I need to turn this I need to surface this down to where I can fit that bearing in so my target is 1 inch 779 uh, it also states in the book in the black book and it's referenced in several places but it does state that measuring the camshaft in play in play should not exceed 4000 so we're going to go for two and uh, be happy with it. So we'll chuck this up in our lathe here in a moment, but first thing we want to do is figure out what it is now, and it happens to be 1807 if I read, and a lot of times these aren't the same, and this one isn't. So it's 803 there and 808 there. So the first thing I'm going to try to do is chuck that up in my lathe, and I'm going to make a simple clean up on it, try to read that I've got it square and I'm cutting off the same amount. So that's eight and that's six and there's just all different sizes. So I'll true that up, take a measurement and then do the math, figure out what I need to remove to take it to one, uh, one inch 779. So we'll move over to the lathe and do this. But like I said, you could do this on a belt sander or on a disc sander and just very carefully go and measure and check and make sure you're not cutting at a too severe of an angle and if four is the maximum and two is kind of the number I go to you, you got kind of a tight window there to make it happen so we'll move over to the lathe here and uh, that's how I'm going to correct this problem. So, the continuing saga of why I hate cam bearings. You need to make sure that that hole is in the right location. They have been, and I'm not talking about where it's at, but front to back. They'll misdrill them things for some reason. And so, you got your cam bearing, which end are you going to take it off? Well, I've had it where I've taken it off the back side. Uh, and not even touch the front side and I've had it different ways so I just go ahead and slide it in, the, in where it goes and I use the little cam bearing block there we go alright gotta hold your lips just right so I got my cam bearing stuck in there and the cam bearing is actually flush with the back of the block on this one. So I'm going to remove the material off the front surface. And we need to remove 30-ish is our number. And it's sticking out the front some 60, some 64,000. So this is, this is how I'll cut this one, okay? so. We'll take it out. So we're going to make a clean cut here. Just clean up that surface. And we'll come in here and measure what we got. And then do the math. And figure out where we're go. Alright, so we are 180. So I gotta take off 19. Yeah. Alright. So I hope I didn't move this thing. 
So I gotta loosen my table. And I'm gonna go in 19. Is that what we said? Yep. What, yep. That doesn't sound right. I thought we had some 30 some to take off. 19, though. I'll do it. I'm gonna make it. So see there, I got an 81. So just a touch. And there I got a 79. And there I got a. So we'll separate our cam bearing. Because I wasn't able to really true this piece up in the lathe. All right, so. I got a little work to do on that piece. I mean, it's there, but it's really just a little snug. I think there's a couple of thousands difference between these. And that is really snug. Just starts to go in. So I'm going to go work on this over here on the machinist table and use a set of calipers and finish tweaking it in. And it's cast iron and it don't take just a whole lot to remove quite a bit. So go slow with this. Let's see how that fits, Bill. We're close, real close. Yep. Yep. Now I'm just gonna put her down totally flat and just polish off just a little bit because we're a little snug. I'm just gonna Take it off a little bit all the way around. It's the front bearing done. And we'll wash it all up. <laughs> wash our cam up because it's got some, I don't know, cosmoline or something on it. We'll clean it all up, install our cam bearings and oil them up. And slip it in the Slip it in the block, see how everything fits, okay? And I just wash this down with oh, a hot solvent, a uh, lacquer thinner or a uh, carburetor cleaner works real good. So we'll clean everything I'm not going to cut a radius in here, but I'm just going to grab out. I guess it's where that reamer kind of rolls some of the stuff around. I could feel just a little bit of a... A little bit of Babbitt there on the edge, proud. A little oil on our bearing surfaces. There's a, a, th a radius cut uh, to the cam bearing that goes to the front because there is a little thrust radius on it. back here okay and the rear cam bearing has a notch in it and that notch goes to the rear of the cam and when it's installed it's it's in held in place by the locator through the side of the block and so basically your notch that's there is there so oil can run down in it and it lubricates the bearing So notch towards the rear of the cam.
got a few thousands of thrust maybe close to two on the front and put a little oil on the rear and we'll go slip it into the block so see what we're going to put the cam in try to line the two pin holes up close proximity to where they go and one thing about a 280 you can just slide it in or a 250 you don't have to worry about the lobes hitting anything uh, we're doing a test fit on the cam we don't have the lifters in here yet we're just seeing if we're happy and then make sure that you got it where them locators go and get the rear cam bearing in place and ouch so I'm just going to throw that screwdriver down on there and I can turn that with little or no pressure I had the cam gear on it let's see I can turn it without, without the cam gear so I'm happy we're been known to put a little uh, tool that puts that on there chuck it up into a, a, a drill battery drill motor and just spin it and oil it and spin it and oil it and it'll get happy uh, some guys go as far as putting a little time saver on the bearing surfaces and spin them in but uh, when we're over and done with with little or no effort we'll be able to turn that cam and that's what another sure. thing about this cam bearing is is that this and this is a reproduction but it measures what a original Ford is but they've bored the hole too big and there's there's a lot of play in that so we go to all this gyration of setting this thrust up and try to keep it under four thousandths and we got 10 or 15 that's moving around in here we didn't really accomplish much other than it does fit the cam but now the whole cam can slide can move back and forth in the bore because the cam nut doesn't hold the bearing in place so to fix that uh, sometimes if it's not really if it's close, uh, you know, a few few thousands, three or four thousands, one way or another, maybe five or ten, a lot of times you can set that down and take a center punch and just dimple it real hard and it'll mushroom out the end and then it'll get snug in the hole of the cam bearing. Can't throw any heat on this to fill the hole and redo it because it'll burn out the babbit. So I'd probably build that up with a little brass and file it down to where it fit that hole nice and snug and uh, we'll do that after a bit. Trying to keep it from getting onto the threads is going to be a trick. Okay. I like it. I like it. I like it better than what it was. Yeah. And after we get the
crank in, Bill? Or we can hold it and secure it, then we'll go ahead and torque that on down a little bit. But uh -huh. Yeah, I can I can move it with one finger. Okay? So it's pretty happy. Uh, the other thing that I might point out, you might wonder why the tape is on here. Uh, now it's not a good time to drop anything on our Babbitt bearings that we like, so I like to protect it. Okay? That's it. Other than that little bit of thrust that we got cut in the cam bearing, it's not moving much at all. So mm -hmm. good. Before we fix that screw though, it was moving, you know, out quite a bit. So that cam will stay kind of where we want it, where we want it to be. All right, so it's time to clear out, clean out the overspray that I got in the lifter holes and we can put the lifters in.